Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to a gray, just a few acres farm. Typical late March weather, kind of hovering around the freezing point and drizzle once in a while. I hear geese, though. This time of year is kind of a waiting game in our climate. You never know when you're going to get that first week of 60 degree weather and you can get out and get all the stuff done. And we got a lot to do. Hi, ladies. Oh. Well, don't mind me. For starters, Hillary and I got to clean out the garden here. It's um, about 60 feet by 60 feet fenced in. Fence is buried a foot down to keep the woodchucks out, which is the problem that we had most when we used to grow a big garden every year back when I was at my old job. And then when we started farming, we had no time for that. But we've got to clear all this overgrowth out and we won't be planning for a while. We don't do early start seeds ourselves. I barter at the farmer's market for things like tomatoes and peppers, and we'll do direct seed around Memorial Day weekend for warm weather stuff like squashes and pumpkins and um, beans is a big one for us. So I have some time, but we need to get on this as soon as it dries out. Quit horsing around your cattle. This red one here, she's always the troublemaker, aren't you? With the garden, I did forget one thing that's so important for us. What you grow has to be the things you like to eat, right? So for us, the staple of the garden is greens, arugula, mescaline mix, Swiss chard and radishes. And those can be planted earlier and we will. And eat those suckers up all summer long. Keep the garden producing long before fall comes and it's time to harvest squash and tomatoes and things like that. Even though the weather hasn't been the greatest, I have been able to do lots of things that aren't out in the weather. And the first is I finished the brooder boxes here. I just gotta do a little bit of work on wiring and hanging wires half a day and we'll be ready. Chicks are coming in a week and a half. But what I'm really looking forward to and waiting for is manure spreading season. I like to get out and spread manure when the grass is just starting to green up and starting its growth. And I think we're just about there. I've been feeling the ground and looking at the pile and thinking it's almost dry enough and yesterday it was and then today rain's forecasted and tomorrow rain's forecast Wednesday's rain forecast Thursday rain forecast it ain't happening this week but I sure do enjoy getting out on the fields for the first time in the spring and you can see the grass is waking up it's starting to green a little bit grow a little bit such that the cattle are thinking it's time to go out on that grass it's not time yet, guys. <laughs> but it will be before too long. Sometimes we're able to let the cattle out onto the grass in the third week of April or so. Oh, now they're all coming out to state their case. <laughs> it's just not time. <laughs> Feel better? Pretty soon I'll be leading them around all these fields back here. Looking forward to those days. Of course, to go right along with manure spreading, I'll have to clean out this winter bedding pack, which has accumulated the whole winter. And I have a video on why we're doing it this way. If you haven't seen it, you can look back in the channel library. It's worked out pretty good this year. It needs another layer, but it's built up quite a bit. Now I'm gonna not be spreading this on the fields this year for the typical kind of plan that I use. This is gonna go out, get piled, and the process of getting pulled apart and getting piled is gonna aerate and mix up this pack and get it really cooking. It'll steam and then it'll sit in the pile and it might be turned if I have the time during the year and not go out of the fields till a year from now because it locks more nutrients into that 
whole pile if you can let it cook and let the bacteria do its work. So that's kind of an update of where we're at, minus one thing. Oh, 656. Let her warm up a little bit. I gotta go over to Dad's shop and get something. Over the last week or so, I've made great strides in cleaning off this Farmall 856 tractor, getting it ready for cleaning. It's a labor of love, and but it's this type of work. I can only do it for two or three hours toward the end of each day before I go in so I can jump right in the shower. And I just pick away at it. It's enjoyable if done in that fashion, in no hurry. And to my eye, she looks pretty cool cleaned off like this. Almost tempting to clear coat it. I've only got the axles and a little bit underside here to do, and then some cleanup of recesses and small areas around bolts and things. I am liking it though. It is going to look super painted. In the process of cleaning, I kept looking at these rear wheels and my original plan was to just take the rims off, unbolt the clamps, take the rims off, roll the wheels out, and leave the centers on. But the centers don't match. At first I thought, well, I can live with that. And as I looked at it more, I thought to myself, that's not the right way to do things. This side, the right side, is a regular clamp-on wheel center like the older farm walls had. But this side, the left side, is a wedge lock wheel center. It's got wedges that you draw together and they wedge against the axle between the wheel center and keep it real tight. These came, they were an option on the 856, but you see them mostly on the later series tractors. I know, I know, it may seem like a minor thing, but the more I looked at it, like I said, the more it bugged me. There's one, and there's the other. They're different. So the master plan has changed here. Instead of leaving the wheel centers on, I'm going to pull the wheels and the centers off. It's going to make it easier for me to finish cleaning under here around the axles, and it's going to make it a lot easier to painting. Just doing a proper job in my book. I've never taken one of these wedge locks off and I've read that they can be a real bear. I've also learned some tricks by reading. We'll see. Just in review, I've got two stands at the front, which give me some lateral stability. I've got a screw jack underneath the clutch housing, which helps support the front weight, belt and suspenders. And I'm putting a single jack in the rear to jack up one side at a time. Now we got one of those 12 point bolts to loosen. Maybe. Other way. Nope. Oh, let's see here. I have to try it the old fashioned way. This is not ideal, but I don't have long enough three quarter extension. She's not happy. I'm going to go to plan B here. And first thing about plan B is to get these rings off for hooking duels on. Dual tires, that is. Then I'm going to zip these rim clamps off, I hope. These clamp bolts can be easy or they can be very not easy. Oh. Okay. Huh. And you gotta wiggle out. Now with the tire off, I got room to put 
my socket on correctly. Look who showed up. <coughs> he came out of retirement. <laughs> it's getting easier. Where is it at? About an inch to go in yet. See, this is wedge shaped and it's got an opposing one that's wedged the opposite way draw them together and they become really tight on the axle. You got it? Yep, keep it standing up, I'll roll it. I'm gonna roll it right out. It's heavier than an M center, for sure. These are grinding drums out of a feed grinder that the neighbors had years ago, and the hubs of them broke out. Dad was charged to fix it. These are the hubs, that, or the rollers, that came out of it. I had to hang that other hub back on the axle temporarily to bribe a counterweight so that this side would lift. Should have left it on there till I had both off. Somebody put a hex head bolt in here. Yeah. And of course I can't reach it from the other side very well. There we go. And of course there's one bolt that won't loosen. There's always one. Oh. Wowie! Yeah! Nope. I got one clamp still on there from that bolt that wouldn't come out, but I can get it off with one clamp still on. Inch and five sixteenths. Who ever heard of such a bolt size? Oh. You know, there is such a thing as a category video. There's a whole category that's just bolts being broke loose. <laughs> I guess it's an ASMR thing. Oh. Doesn't feel very ASMR to me. <laughs> that's the last one to break. Oh. The stud. These are regular old wheel clamps on this side. Well, now I screwed it up. There we go. That was pretty tiring. <laughs> I'm definitely more a fine mechanical person than a beat it to death kind. It reminds me of the birthday I celebrated for 30 seconds. What a short birthday. It was my 32nd birthday. Mm -hmm. I sure wish I was 32 again. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we should sweep this up first. This was my great great grandmother's broom. It's true. She put the duct tape on it too. 
I have a new broom, but this one's not worn out yet, so we're going to keep using it. There we go. She's all stripped down. I just got to remove a little bit more paint. Then we can do clean down and be ready for new paint. As for these wheel centers, I have a couple choices. Of course, I can either go with the regular clamp style or the wedge lock style. I can either go find one or the other of whichever I want at one of the salvage yards south of me. Or I can take and swap one off of the 756 that's got two of these on it and put the wedge lock on it. I don't know, I'll figure it out later. Turned out to be a very nice afternoon today. My son Henry's home from school this week, so he's going to help us bed. My upper body is whipped. Right, Henry? Yeah. <laughs> Kettle, you got to leave for a few minutes. All right, Orton. We gotta go. Let's go. Come on. Come on, little one. Let's go. Out you go. She's huge. She is very big. Are you ready to come in? All right, go on in. Go ahead. ones 2306 2307 2303 are you thirsty I think you might be <laughs> hi patty you look as grumpy as ever Cows are round like beach balls with their pregnancies. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're going to be calving the end of April and through May is 
And it seems like cattle, you can't really tell they're shown until the very end because it could just be gut, you know. <laughs> Things you would never say to your wife, right? Oh my God, I would have killed you if you did. <laughs> uh, looks like this is the only good day for weather this week. Yeah, it's going to be really wet this week. Two inches of rain maybe, so hopefully it'll dry out after this week. I hope it does too. That's our day. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was kind of a mixture of everything, just what we're up to. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Takes a poop and the president too And the fancy grand banker in his three-piece suit The big fat general and all of his troops The truth of the matter is everybody poops The famous brain surgeon has to leave his lump And the high-priced model has to stop for a dump But can the size of Canada can't spray away the truth Cause even if they don't admit it, everybody poops <laughs>